Hi, welcome to Cinema Then, Cinema Now, the film series with lively discussion. I'm your host, Jerry Carlson, and I teach cinema studies at the College of Staten Island of the City University of New York. Today we complete our 10 film series, a survey of the last 25 years of Latin American film. Tonight's film will be the relatively recent Venezuelan production, Oriana, directed by Fina Torres. Oriana was a winner of a major prize at Cannes in the 1980s and has been shown successfully around the world. We'll be talking about this fascinating film that portrays several eras of Venezuelan history through the memories of a young woman after today's screening. We have two guests as usual, and they are Professor Ronald Schwartz of Kingsborough Community College, a noted expert on Latin American cinema, and Matilde Davu, a Venezuelan journalist and well-known short story writer. Okay, enjoy Oriana. Hi, welcome back to Cinema Then, Cinema Now. I certainly hope you enjoyed the gorgeous Oriana by Fina Torres. It's an intriguing film. It has a very complicated narrative structure, it's visually stunning, and I think it's a very interesting portrayal of a number of years in Venezuelan society. Those are a lot of things to talk about. We've got 30 minutes to do it in, but before we begin doing that, let me introduce today's two guests. Sitting to my left is Professor Ronald Schwartz. Uh, Ron is a professor of Romance Languages at uh, Kingsborough, uh, Kingsborough Community College of the City University of New York. He's the author of a number of books, um, several of them on Spanish film, including Spanish Film Directors, 21 Profiles, and The Great Spanish Films. He's currently at work on several projects, but among those projects is one called The Great Latin American Films, which will be a compendium describing uh, those films critically for the University of Texas Press. Ron, as you would guess, also teaches Latin American film and literature uh, and has done for it for a number of years. To my right, we have the privilege of having with us today Matilde uh, Davu. Matilde is a De journalist. Davu. Davu. Uh, good start for me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Matilde, nonetheless, is a, a working writer. She is a journalist and a short story writer. She's been publishing short stories, as a matter of fact. Uh, since 1967, has several uh, collections published, a number of them translated. One of those collections is Mat Matuna. Maituna. Maituna. I'm not doing very well today, but I'm glad, you, I'm glad I have you along to help, to help me. Her current project, in fact, is a, um, is, 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 you know, you now got me nervous about pronouncing this, but I'll go ahead and say it. Um, Los Besos de Medusa. Correcto. Uh, okay. The Kisses of Medusa, which will be a series of stories about South American women working in the professional life in New York, uh, in New York City. Well, your professional life, Matilde, uh, has taken place not only in New York, but of course in Venezuela as, uh, as well. And as we were talking before the show, you first saw this film in Venezuela itself. I'm curious about the production of this uh, beautiful, I mean, color, color film. How did Fina Torres get this film made, and who, who got it made, the producers, that sort of thing? Okay, when I, when I saw the film the first time, um, it was, of course, in Venezuela. The, in, in a, it was not even in a debut for the public, for right. the audience. But it, because I have been a friend of... Uh, and I am a still a friend right. of uh, the producers, okay. uh, Luis Eduardo Enrique and Alfonso Enriquez. Um, so then they invite me to, to see the film. 
and Fina was there, of course, and um, the, the, the actors also. Oh. Um, for, for Fina, um, Fina Torres, she has been, uh, you know, trying to, to, to collect uh, the, the money she has been, you know, to, in order to, to, to yes, to, to make the, her film. And uh, the thing is that in Venezuela, the, the cinematography nowadays has taken a little bit of more attention. Right. Because before, for us, it was very incipient. It was, uh, you know, only starting by that time. And we didn't have the money, and it was not a foundation just to, to, to help them, and right. so on. But nowadays, you know, it's, it's a kind of industry nowadays. Okay, and is that you were saying you're talking about a foundation? <coughs> There's now been a, a government foundation yes. that helps to coordinate and support these. Yes, that, that belongs more to the how do you call that the Ministerio de Hacienda, the Fomento. Right. Okay. Okay, Ministerio de Fomento. They have a particular department to, in order to to help uh, uh, Venezuelan filmmakers, you know, to produce uh, or to, to to do their films. Okay. Okay. In Venezuela and so. Okay, well, that, that's good. Now, the, these mm. producers, have they, had they done films before this, or is this one of their first No, projects? no, but the, the thing is that there has been a co-production with the government, with the, these people, okay. and this and that, because, you know, it's, uh, it's quite, quite, you know, Avenza, all the France airlines. Provided. There are, eh? France yeah. provided some of the France audience. also, it's a, it's a kind of a co-production. So French then you production. get, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, and this and that, so then you have the wonderful thing. Right, right, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. Well, there's a lot of no, there's a lot of wonderful things about this, about mm -hmm. this film. Ron, how do you, uh, how would you relate this film to any other Latin American films you, you've seen? I, well, we'll talk about what it's Ven how mm -hmm. Venezuelan it is in a mm -hmm. few minutes, but, well, but what traditions of filmmaking do you locate this with South South American mm -hmm. or or other kinds of traditions? Well, uh, one of the biggest themes in this film is memory, Jerry. And I mean, if you go just by titles alone, there was a Cuban film called. Uh, Mem Memorias del Sub Desarrollo by Tomas Alea, Memories of Which was in the series, which was the first film people saw in the series. So this is the last film. Accidentally, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally on purpose, yeah. But the, we didn't uh, rehearse this. No, 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 no not no. this, not this. But uh, memory is like the key theme, and uh, I think uh, everyone wants to explore uh, their past and whether it's a Venezuelan past or a Cuban past. And I think that's probably one of the high points of this particular film, because you get to know the life and the lifestyle of this woman who now apparently resides in France with her husband, who comes back to Venezuela, yeah, as you know from the film. And, and then you see how the women in this film lived, what they were subject to, the, the patriarchy, the kind of uh, the, the, the father who was uh, very tight-fisted and uh, ruled over all of the women in the house, the maids in the house who took charge of the children. Uh, and you get a feeling of Venezuelan life uh, among the, the upper classes, which I think is, is reflective in so many other you know, Latin American films right. of the era. Uh, for example, uh, Lucia by uh, Humberto Solas does the right. same thing. It's a huge... You know, the film. Cuban film that has those the, the Cuban film that has the three parts that shows women's lives in three different eras. In exactly, Cuba. And, and well, but, but although uh, I think uh, Oriana is a smaller film, it's a very beautiful, sensitive film about one woman and her life and her memories, and I, that's probably why it is. I think, in my term, is very successful. You know. And although it's funny, I didn't consider the film exactly Latin American when I was watching it because. Oh, okay, we'll talk. We'll, 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 let's talk about why you wouldn't consider it Latin right. American. <laughs> then we'll go over to why. Well, it, 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 what there seems to be so much French sensibility in the film. Not mm -hmm. that the, <coughs> besides being a co-production, and, and you hear the French language in the beginning of the soundtrack, but it's the way everything is photographed with a sort of gentility. And Latin American films always tend to be very revolutionary and political and harsh. You know, from that point of view, not that they haven't become sensitive, but now with the new group of women directors like Maria Luisa Bemberg in right. Argentina, who did Camila, I mean, you, you feel that th these women are trying to discover themselves in their past, and they're using a kind of different uh, technique, and, and I think which owes more to a European tradition of filmmaking, or perhaps a newer 
a filmmaker's view than what they've done formerly before. In other words, they're not going back to political films right. with messages. They're trying right. to... The, the, the models are not, uh, say, Soviet filmmaking of the 20s. The models are not the uh, revolutionary European filmmaking of the 60s, like Godard. Is right, of course. The most, most obvious example, yeah. But the, I, I would say, just for the moment, that the, mm -hmm. there is someone from, from France, just to follow that, that this is... This is a film that reminds one of some of the films of Anna René, right. who is one of the you know, great creators of memory films, mm -hmm. with films like La Guerre Fini or Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. um, Mon Amour. Mon Amour, right. yes. Well, also, this film reminded me a lot of the new uh, French film Chocolat. That, uh, That's Claire Denis, that another Claire film Denis. made by a woman. Right, and in, in the sense that it's, again, the sensibility about another woman who comes back to the Cameroons who tries to discover her past and what happened when she was a child. And I think that's why it, the, the film doesn't seem new to me, but yet it's very new because I must confess this is the first Venezuelan film I've ever seen. Okay. You know, uh, which well, is, you know... <laughs> we, 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 we're always happy to capture, capture confessions on camera. <laughs> on camera right. but, but it was a beautiful experience. Well, but let's talk just... For, we've just talked about it, you know, the, the fact that Fina Torres did study filmmaking in France. It is a co-production. So it, that, in some sense, makes sense. But, but this film really does show us a lot about the changes in Venezuelan society over a number uh, uh, of years. Do you feel, what do you think it shows <coughs> us, and do you think it's really an accurate in, in its own way mm. view? I can tell you that um, I identify myself in many aspects with Maria. Okay. B because that is my generation all day, mm. okay? Uh, Oriana could be my mother or, mm. or probably my grandmother. Um, and um, Maria, in the adolescent time, when, when she was a child, when she was invited there, you know, for that vacation, mm -hmm. is uh, my childhood. Yeah. Uh, so when you <laughs> see this, you, see, you really see your child? Right. Well, because they are, she's, she's having, she, she works with a lot of uh, symbols there, you know, in that movie. Right. Uh, for example, when I saw the film, I remember, uh, Maria um, praying before go to bed, and the same words that my mother taught me, you know, to say, mm -hmm. you know, Angel de la Guarda, dulce compañía, no me desampares ni de noche ni de día. That was mm -hmm. a, a, a pray, you know, that we used to say every, uh, before go to bed, before sleep, mm -hmm. falling asleep. So um, the presence of of the servant, the maid, you know, mm -hmm. has been accompanying us for many years, always. I have had a nanny when I was a, a child, and, uh, and then the, the servants, you know, had been living with us, sure. d d like a family. Right. They, they belong to us, and we belong to them. Right. As, as you see, you know, Oriana couldn't do practically anything because the Fidelian, you know, was there, you know, like a real, a strong oh, mother. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. And, of course, it's Fidelia who takes the role of protecting of Oriana against, uh, against the father. And vengeance in some way. Right. Also mm -hmm. killing the, 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 the father. The father. Right. Yeah. Could you imagine? That it's, uh, a lot of uh, me, a lot of symbols are there. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> the way that we, the way that it was, right. you know, the, we were living probably, my grandmother mm -hmm. was, was like this. So, we didn't have too much uh, time, you know, spending, uh, say, in bicycling or, or jogging or this or that. No, we, we right. couldn't. We were, you know, dreaming all the time. Well, what did you think of the father in terms of his role in the film, especially when he... He was terrible, he horrible. ...beats, you know, Sergio. I, mean, I think that uh, it was a little bit exaggerated. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, uh, the, 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 fa the, 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 the father was... Quite exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Of course, we, we have been respected a, a lot, you know, the figure of a, of a father in our families. Mm -hmm. But particularly that one, you know, I couldn't respect him so much because he was <laughs> well, so very... Did fathers as, lock as, up As Maria did it, you know, when, <laughs> when she say, here are your flowers, mm -hmm. bastards, she say, yeah, you know? Right, right, right. As she, as, as she did it. So Maria in that time is the Maria nowadays. Uh, the, the interesting thing, though, is that in this film, to me, is we have this father who, you know, is so absolute in his power 
but he's, he's absolute in his power over what is essentially a society of women in this, uh, in this film, because it is, this is a <coughs> film that is about the relationships among women across generations, but also in the same uh, generations. Yes, you have to understand that um, for us, at least in Venezuela, I come from, from Maracaibo, and Maracaibo, you know, is the, are the Guajiros, the Guajiros are um, matriarchal families, oh. and matrilineal. Also. Matrilineal families, right. So uh, my mother was very important, my, my grandmother extremely important, and my aunt also was important. The only man in the house that was uh, very important was the, the, uh, the uncle, that means, the 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 uncle's mother's line. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so then, t, uh, for us in in Venezuela, you know, women are not so supposed to be uh, so um, subdued by it, by by the power of the man. That depends of of the of our culture. Depends also of our the way that we were living before. Right. Right, so, uh, so that's quite interesting because this is not, uh, as the film portrays it, this is not unusual that there would be this highly developed, not only family relations, but this culture of women uh, themselves. And in fact, that's not unusual. It's, it's part of the culture itself. And so that, that makes, in some sense, the, the father, the unusual character, and he's so repressive and uh, you know, asserting so much uh, power and it's only natural that women, in this kind of matriarchal society, would, in their own ways, fight back. Yeah, but you have to find out that uh, our in our countries the the, um, the influence of the Spaniards, right. you know, that they are very patriarchal, mm -hmm. you know, makes it with uh, with our matriarchal uh, yeah. matrilineal family. <laughs> right, right, right. So, no, no. So, <laughs> so then you you find these two these two so things. So with, with the colonial <laughs> history comes yeah. exactly this conflict between a matrilineal tradition mm -hmm. and a patriarchal uh, colonial uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, but the the, the man, the, the figure, you know, of of a man in our society, in our families, of course, is a lot of respect, as I was telling you. That power that I had, that particular man, right. you know, the, the, the father of Oriana, the, his power was in the land, and having a land, you know, right. is also having the women, and having the cows, and having the, the horses, and having the son that he could kill, and having everything. Right, right. But that society, you know, has been changing a lot since, uh, that was more for an agricultural society, I could say. Right. That uh, after, you know, the, the, the oil, the explosion of oil came, came started in 1910, right. but the real exploitation became in 1914. Right. So, so then the society were changing a little bit, uh, you know, the, the people were going out of these big haciendas, you know, to the capital cities, right. and this and that. That is it, our history. But well, you, you don't get any notion of the city at all being there. I mean, you see the, the ocean, and you see this hacienda really in rooms and but you don't feel there's any other society beyond that particular area which is very strange because the woman Oriana and uh, Maria they're so educated they're so yeah. uh, they're so sensitive you know and and, and um, th they seem to have been educated somewhere or they have this wonderful wealth of knowledge about objects about of course we have had a lot of time I to read well, <laughs> <laughs> well, to learn French. <laughs> well, that, that well again, that's remarkable too. But uh, you didn't see there was no schooling involved. I mean, or we were dealing with women on vacation mostly, and uh, and I remember I was uh, reading something about this film, and they were talking about the recapturing of one's youth, you know, and how uh, Maria goes back and she looks in the old little trunk or box and she mm -hmm. these things trigger the whole idea of memory yeah. uh -huh. you know this and, is a memory uh, and, and, and in our family also they wear a, a trunk mm -hmm. with the, the the dresses you know from the big events mm -hmm. like of marriage of the past or first communion or right. something like that is always there so then for me as a child to open the trunk you know was going into mm -hmm. Into treasure, 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 Tre treasure, treasure, treasure chest. Mm -hmm. Yes, a treasure right. chest. There's uh, the memories that mm -hmm. you, you 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 talk about. And, and of course, the, the, it's the fact that it is this hacienda, right. which uh, which I think is is not only is it 
just visually a very interesting place to see, but the house becomes this, this metaphor of memory right. itself because the different rooms have different experiences uh, a, a, attached, uh, attached with them. Mm -hmm. And to me, in the film, um, Maria begins in a place completely unlike that. I mean, we see her in this modern, the bedroom of a modern apartment, presumably in, in Paris. Paris. Yes, in, in, in yes. Paris. We presume we, that. Yeah. We, we presume that. And then she moves. And then, then what we see is she's in an environment that can trigger these memories because it's a place where memories are kept. Mm -hmm. You know, it's big enough so that there have not have only been different experiences in different rooms, but those experiences are collected mm -hmm. uh, in, in, those, in those objects. Um, well, isn't it someone who says in the film that uh, uh, Oriana didn't want any, even the dust moved? Uh -huh. You know, because exactly. even the dust provided some kind of base for memory. Exactly. But, but the rooms, I, th I think, I, I, I think, I suppose, you know, mm -hmm. the, room, the rooms, uh, are, you know, the past, the memory didn't come like a fluid like this, you know. It comes also through, well, you know, different uh, moments, different senses, situations, you know. and different yes. perceptions. So each room, you know, has its own, own history. Story. Well, when, for example, or, or Maria goes story. to a window and she looks out in the yard and you see her the windows see were herself. very important for us. Yes, you yeah. see, in other words, windows always, you know, uh, you're looking into the past. And, uh, well, of course, she looks out, it's the present, she looks out, and the car right. drives into, into the shot, and all of a sudden we realize that there has been the transition made. She's looking out, out. and she's now seeing the past Herself. Mm -hmm. and, not, uh, and not seeing the other. That's very... But when I'm speaking about windows, that is a very important, <laughs> you know, for women. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, yes, yes. Especially for... For women that has uh, that uh, sp Spanish past mm -hmm. and uh, also had Arab past, because that is a oh, yes, yes La Reja. Reja. right. Okay, so the windows uh, reflect not only the the, the, inside. the, the inside of uh, of well of the area where the women wear, like mm -hmm. the right. Serrallo, you know, right. 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 but also. Um, the only possible way that they have had, you know, to communicate uh, mm -hmm. also with, with men. Right. Oh, yes, they would yes, look yes. out, sure. Uh -huh. right. yeah. And that is very Spanish. Definitely. From, a, right. from a Spain. Right. right. That's why those windows were like this also, like yeah. barrotes, no? Yes, yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. balconies, right. Exactly. And of course, that uh, towards the end of the film, there is mm -hmm. this great thing that she goes, she eventually goes into the other room where the relative right. uh, is, uh, is, is, is living. But also she, has, she sees, uh, she, she goes in there and sees the objects, right. and she sees the window. She's attracted. She knows that there must be someone there because mm -hmm. it's one window communicating mm -hmm. um, yeah. with, um, with another. Now, uh, this is uh, curious to me, this, uh, this, this hacienda it, it itself. I'm, I'm just to what degree is, is Oriana part of a society that has already passed? That is, when she's a child, the hacienda properly is a working place, mm -hmm. okay? But when, we, when Maria visits her, um, this hacienda is already, it's, you know, it's in good shape, mm -hmm. but the moment, how to put this, the moment of haciendas is already passing mm -hmm. in Venezuela. Is that true? Yes, uh, but uh, well, there, there are still big, big, enormous haciendas in Venezuela. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is this, that these haciendas, you know, has been incorporated into the economy of the own uh, right. uh, mm -hmm. country. I mean, right. mm -hmm. you know, uh, the haciendas that before were of uh, caña, mm -hmm. the yeah, or, or right. yeah, where agriculture mm -hmm. became. Um, oh, the homes the of the wealthy. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh no, the cattle. Cattle. Sure. cattle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. So then uh, they have uh, thousands, thousands of, uh, um, uh, of acres, mm -hmm. you know, right. where, where the cows, you know, go. Um. Well, let, let me ask you something uh, about uh, uh, something else Venezuelan about, about them. We've been talking about it directly. We've been talking about it, you know, in the history of Venezuela. We've been talking about it, about your experience. You know, this is like uh, your childhood. But 
what about this film and contemporary um, Venezuelan uh, liter literature? Is this film like some of the things that are happening? I, I mean, is this narrative uh, in any sense typical? I, I don't, I, I, the problem here is, of course, I'm asking a question that's a generalization. Mm -hmm. and we want to grant to every artist their, ind their individuality. Mm -hmm. uh, still, I'll ask the general, <laughs> general question. Does this strike you as, as, well, sometimes we have moments in which uh, we think that, that what's going on in literature and what's going on in film is the same kind of thing. Yeah. And then at other moments, it doesn't seem like they're the same kind of thing. What does that, I mean, you're a writer yourself, you know, other Venezuelan uh, well, with the past, with memories. With the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If I were a poet, I were, were writing just now. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, so in that way, does, it, does this, uh, is this correspond with some contemporary Venezuelan uh, literature, this film? Or do you think it's typical in some? <clears throat> We can't say that uh, it's, it's typical. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's typical. It's it not that uh, it's, uh, you know, that for us that is, uh, it's, it's normal. It seems okay. to correspond more with contemporary filmmaking than I would, would say. Okay, that, that's, yeah, that's. Contemporary the, film, no, you know, novel, I mean, more or less. I feel it's more, all the ideas are in the air and many directors now, especially women, are doing the same sort of work. Um, and again, the memory film has hit a big vogue, Jerry. I yeah, mean, oh, I know, I know. And I mean, uh, I mean, you love the, you know, the, the smell of the Madeleines and Marcel Proust <laughs> and uh, what they can do. I remember, I think the first memory film I ever saw was Rebecca, you know, the great... Uh, oh, the great Hitchcock, Moria, yes, The great yes. Hitchcock film. And I've always loved this whole idea of backstory, who's narrating and what's going on. And I think that's the success of Oriana, that... You have these wonderful narrators, and they they lead you into a you know a whole world of the past. It's a very and the, poetic. And the yes, technique, yes. the technique, the cutting is sometimes very, you know, you have to watch very carefully because yes, yes. because sometimes Maria can look like young Oriana, and then suddenly exactly. it's not the same girl. And then yeah. and then and then even this like this film has to be decoded. You know, you look yes. at one set of clothes and then another set of clothes, and you keep going back in time until you you really Mm -hmm. What's going on? Do, 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 do you remember the the moment that she's uh, seen through the kaleidoscope? Oh yes, right. That was that was terrific. So she was her Fina, you know, seen right. through the camera. Right. Yes. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's coded in those mm -hmm. uh, in 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 those in a kind of reels. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, this is, this, this is this kind of emblem of the mm -hmm. whole technique mm -hmm. of the film itself. It's also interesting to me because, you know, so many, many films represent memory, but uh, frequently you get these very strong, over-emphatic things, you know, mm -hmm. the screen begins to wave and, you know, and yes. it says, let us now go back uh, 1940. to... 1940. No, it's 1940. <laughs> but this, but this uh, in a, in because a, uh, I agree with you, in a very poetic manner, shocks us because the past just intrudes. Uh, you come, she comes into a room, she looks at something, and then the scene has changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, technically, but we'd say it's a straight cut. There's no right. dissolve, there's no, mm -hmm. yeah. But this is not unusual. In fact, Carlos Saura did one of the best memory films of his life called Mi Crios One, but Mi Prima Angelica, My uh, Cousin yes. Angelica, in which you have the one character plays the young one and the old one, and you, he's the only link of continuity. But the sets change, and suddenly you realize that you're in the past. You're, you're in the Civil War days, and then suddenly you're back in 1973. And, that, that was probably one of the, the greatest problems with Sarah's films, that they used the same character. If they used a little boy playing the young one, or a, you know, and then one the adult, then you wouldn't have these problems. Yeah, but I should also say there is a, uh, there's a, an Argentine director, uh, Manuel Antin, who does the same thing. There's a f film of his far away and long ago, in which the first, the first scene, you're looking at it, and it seems to be on the pompous, and it seems to be a period piece. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, you understand that there's a little boy there, and then there are his parents, but they look much older than they would be if, if he was that age. Then there's an older man, mm -hmm. and you begin to understand that the old man mm -hmm. is actually the narrator who has just died. 
<laughs> who's come back in memory to his childhood to see himself, oh but then remembers God. his parents from. Mm -hmm. So th this uh, th this th this can become. Uh, well, people frequently say, "Well, time is all time is always the present mm -hmm. in film." That's a lie. That's lot. true. Well, no, I. We're watching it for what is it, ninety okay. minutes, you know, and and, and and but the problem with this idea of taking time and bending it psychologically is always beautiful. I think that that's the, where you get the true artist, and and in this sense, Fiona Torres did a wonderfully, you know, sensual, uh, explicitly beautiful film with narration and beautiful flashbacks, where it was almost like a Quaker Oats effect. You know, one goes into the other, one goes into <laughs> the other, and then we go back, you know, mm -hmm. and and you. It was all very smooth. You, yeah. didn't, you weren't jolted in any way. And when the film was over, I, I felt, oh, that's what it was all about. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> the, the mystery, you know. <laughs> it becomes, this, yes. Yeah, right, right, it taboos right. the secrets. Right, right. Well, because there is this mystery aspect mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the whole film of what is what is happening. What's interesting to me is that it's a mystery that's, it's, it's like a mystery film, because it's only solved at the end, mm -hmm. but it's not who done it. It's really who what is it? Who uh, is it? Right. And what are the consequences <laughs> of right. uh, of this and that? Yes, we have a lot of ta well, we have had you know this kind of. I don't think that that is a taboo that is only in our society, mm -hmm. but it's also a taboo oh, in your oh. society everywhere. Oh, everywhere. The incest, 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 right. incestus. Right. Right. Um, well, that's a delicate problem. Yes, mm -hmm. that is very delicate and. It's, I think that it was the main problem there. Well, you know, the lead actress who played Oriana, adult, you didn't think anything happened to her at all. I mean, when you see her on screen and you're not really prepared for the conclusion. Jim. You know, you know, we can't prepare the audience anymore for the conclusion okay. of this <laughs> because we have to conclude. Is, right. is, is, <laughs> is the thing. <laughs> if you'd uh, like more information about cinema then, cinema now, or about cinema studies, graduate or undergraduate, give us, drop us a line. Drop it to Cinema Then, Cinema Now, the College of Staten Island, Staten Island, New York, 10301. Let me give you that information again, okay? Drop it to Cinema Then, Cinema Now, the College of Staten Island, Staten Island, New York, 10301. Well, Ron, I hate to stop you when you were just about to reveal all the mystery of mysteries <laughs> about these things. Next show. Next show. Next show. <laughs> Matilde, I want to thank you for coming and sharing with us your experiences as a Venezuelan writer, woman, and thank journalist. You. Okay? Thank you. Well, I hope that our thought here has led you to thought and discussion at home that you enjoy. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>